Hello, guys. All right. So, welcome to another episode of Everything Business. Right. Today, I'll be looking at a 2016 paper. All right. Question. A question from a question from a 2016 paper. Right. Yes. Um, I received requests um, about you know the topics that I need to look at in terms of past paper questions. And so we're going to be looking at a receipts and payments question. It's a receipts and payments question. However, it does test your knowledge in single and incomplete records and also income statement, adjustment to income statement and balance sheet, adjustment to balance sheet, right? So you will need to know these topics in order to do well at this question, in order to interpret the question, all right? So let's jump right into it. As I always say, whenever you see a question, don't get flustered. All you need to do is to read through the question carefully. So you have to read through the question, right? So it says St. James Sports Club, Sports and Cultural Club present the following balances at the 1st of July, 2014. Um, says Owen, for bar supplies, they give us that information. So these are all open balances, if you will, right? The 1st of July. Um, subscription in arrears, the word arrears, it means owing, right, or accrued, same thing. Pre premises at cost, equipment at cost, bar inventory, subscription in advance, loans to members, um, provision for depreciation, you know, this would basically be accumulated depreciation. Fees owing to the bank, um, bank and cash, right? Oh and also periodicals and magazines, right? So the first part of the question, it asks us to prepare the club statement of affairs as at the 1st of July, 2014, right? Um, because of space constraint, I just write the St. James Sports Club statement of affairs, the heading, I write the heading um, in this format, right? I didn't know how, many space, how much space I have, so I just put it there, all right? So the statement of affairs for those persons who may not know, statement of affairs is another term for a balance sheet, right? It is um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an organization that keeps a full set of records, which means like accounting records, right? You would call it a balance sheet or a statement of financial position. But in some organization, let me not say organization, some businesses, most likely small businesses, right? Where the owners are not so knowledgeable about accounting principles and they may not keep accurate or they may not abide by accounting principles, right? They, they, they will call this the, the, the statement of affairs, right? Because it is not made up from a full set of double entry records. It is made up of single entry records and stuff like that. So you call it a statement of affairs. So it's the same thing. So balance sheet equal statement of affairs. Same thing is just that in different types of organization, they will call it differently, all right? Good. So we start off with the fixed asset. Right, start off with the fixed asset. Let me move this thing from right here so that you guys can see better. Mm -hmm. So we start off with the fixed asset. That's the format of the balance sheet. But if you, if you don't know how to do a balance sheet, right, you can check out my, my, my video. I'll put a link in the description, right, on how to do a balance sheet because you'll definitely need to know how to do a balance sheet or a statement of financial position, right, which is the new name. You will definitely need to know how to do that before you can do this, all right? So you start with fixed asset, right? Um, or premises, if you look at premises, it says premises at cost, 150,000, there it is. But then we have depreciation, accumulated depreciation, which is 30,000, right? We have that, that depreciation there, 30,000, right? You will definitely need to subtract that depreciation. So you subtract the depreciation, you get 120,000. Same procedure for equipment. Equipment at cost, 70,000, right? Um, and then you have the depreciation there, 22,000. Subtract it, you get 48,000. Now you add up these two and you get this 168,000. So that's basically the total fixed assets. Then we have current assets, right? Then we have inventory, which is 1,300, right? Inventory, 1,300, right? It was stated, it was stated there. It says bar inventories. Yeah, see there, 1,300. 
Then you have loan to members. And you may be wondering, why do I have loan to members here? Isn't loan a liability? Well, you are correct. Loan is a liability. But this is not. It's a liability if you are the person borrowing the loan. Right? In this instance, you are not the person borrowing the loan. Right? You are the person giving the loan. So it's essentially, right, people, your members will owe you money. Right? So that's a current asset. It's almost like debtors or accounts receivables. Right? It's basically the same thing. Um, I should have had in right up in this section here, P radicals and magazine, which is sort of like an inventory, right? Because what they do is they sell the P radicals and the magazines to members to generate funds just the same. So it's almost like you're, you're stuck, right? But I, I had missed it because I put it weird on the bottom here. I had missed it. So I, I just eat it up right here. So, all right. Um, yeah, subscriptions in arrears, right? Subscriptions in arrears here, 2,500. Remember that the word arrears mean owing. Um, and from your adjustment to balance sheet principles, you would have known that a current um, subscription, a subscription, accrued, right? Accrual revenue, accrued revenue should be included in the current assets section. So the subscription in arrears is an accrued revenue because you're expecting to get that revenue, you're expecting to get that money, um, but it is owing. So it's an asset because it's almost like debtors again, right? Then you have bank, then you have cash, there they are, bank and cash there. And then, you know, that is where you know, I saw the periodicals and magazine, but I'll just put it there. It's not going to, you're not going to lose any marks or, or anything like that. Only if they're marking for the, the principle of um, liquidity or the order of liquidity. And that they did not state that right here that we should put it in the order of liquidity, right? So it's, 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 it's fairly okay. I don't think they will mark it down for that. All right, but if, if you would want to, you could put it just below inventory or loan to members, all of that, right? They would be um, less liquid because at the order of liquidity, you start from least liquid to most liquid. Cash would be the most liquid, all right? So putting the periodicals and magazines here is not abiding to the order of liquidity principle, right? So just to point that out to you, all right? And then we move on to the next heading in the statement of financial position, sorry, the statement of affairs balance sheet right, is the less current liabilities, right? Now, the current liabilities, we have bar supplies owing. So they're owing for bar supplies, 3,200 up the top there. We have subscriptions in advance, right? So when you say in advance, you're talking about prepayment. So yeah, people are paying for their subscription in advance, right? That is a liability because you owe them the money, right? That's why it's a liability. Then you have bank fees owing, right? So fees owing to bank, 700, there it is. You add up all of your current liabilities, you get 5,600. You subtract it from your total current asset, you get 17,100, right? This figure here, the 17,100, you know, it will be called working capital, but you don't have to show it because they did not ask you to show it. So you add it now to the 168, to get 185,100. In the topic, single and incomplete record, this 185,100 will be called a closing capital. Right in that topic. I have not made a video on single and incomplete record as yet, but I need to get to that. All right. So just remind me. Right. And then you have the finance by section, which is capital 185,100. Right. Um, and so basically, this is the statement of affairs. Right. This is the statement of affairs. This is easy seven marks. I would say that this is an easy seven marks. They're just asking you to do a balance sheet. Right. Um, the average accounting student should be able to do a balance sheet. That is what you learn from maybe fourth form, right? So this, I would give this question maybe a four out of 10, all right? Four out of 10. I don't think it's a difficult um, question, all right? So let's move on to the next one. Part B of the question now. So once again, when you see a question, you always read through the question, all right? So this question now is definitely testing your receipts and payments knowledge, especially your knowledge on the principles regarding subscriptions, right? Now subscriptions is extremely, it's a, it's a the, the principles surrounding subscription, right? It's kind of tricky. Right, and it may take some time to learn, but you need to practice in order to get. Now, 
a subscription is really a dues, right? Dues, sorry, is really dues paid by your the members of a nonprofit organization, right? Sometimes subscriptions may be owing at the beginning of the period. Sometimes subscription may be owing at the end of the period. And sometimes subscriptions may be prepaid, which means that the members are paid in advance and sometimes at the beginning of the period. And sometimes subscriptions may be prepaid at the end of the period, right? Now, you need to understand the principles regarding subscription. The principles, um, they are listed, they are outlined right here in this question because this question is actually testing your knowledge of the principles. So they give you the information. The club has 320 members who pay $100 each as annual subscription. That information is important. We're going to get back to that. The following information was extracted from the records for the year ended the 30th of June, 2015. So we are given the opening balances, closing balances, right? So they say subscription in arrears, subscription in advance. They are testing your knowledge of the principle to see if you know how to treat subscription in advance um, at the beginning of the period and at the end, subscriptions owing at the beginning and at the end, all right? So they said, prepare the subscription account for the year ending the 30th of June, 2015, showing clearly the amount transferred to the income and expenditure account, the payments received during the year. So you're actually asking you to show two things, right? So the principle regarding subscription is um, subscription owing at the beginning of the period, you should debit it, right? Subscription owing at the end of the period, you credit, just like here. See there, Owen BD, 2,500, Owen CD, right? The end, 1,400. So you put them like that, right? So that's the first thing you would do, you would enter that, right? Subscription in advance are prepaid. At the beginning, you credit, yeah? Subscription at the closing, prepaid at the closing, the rule is you debit, right? So you do that. You leave a little space because you need to put the income and expenditure and the cash figures. You need to plug them in in order to balance the account, right? Now, the subscription account carries a credit balance, which means that to increase it, you have to make a credit entry, right? So they say that subscriptions um, were, were, were paid, right, during the year, right? And even though they ask you the amount for income and expenditure first, you cannot calculate the amount for income and expenditure first. You have to, in, you have to put in the payments received during the year. Then you calculate the income and expenditure. Right, so I don't know whoever did this question. They probably trying to, to 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 trick you, which should not happen, or they just made an error, right? Because you cannot calculate the income and expenditure before, right? You input the payments received during the year. So we are going to calculate the payments received during the year. So it says that the club has two hundred and twenty members, right? Who pays one hundred dollars each as annual subscription. Right, and so in order to calculate how much you receive during the year, right, you're gonna multiply 320 by 100. That would give you 32,000. So now that we have the info, the amount that they that we receive during the year, 32,000. Now all we need to do in order to find the amount to be transferred to income and expenditure, right, is we are going to balance off the account, right. So when you're balance off in the account, all you need to do you add up this side, right. To get the total, so you add up this side, 1,700 plus 32,000 plus 1,400, you get 35,100. This side would add up to 2,500 plus 2,100 would be 4,600. So 4, 35,100 minus 4,600 would give us 30,500, which would be the amount needed now to transfer to the income and expenditure account. And you just balance up the account. So in order for you to to do this question, you would need to understand the principles regarding subscriptions, right? And how you treat subscriptions. Not only that, you would need to know double entry principles, simple double entry principles, right? And how to balance off a double entry account. So in total, what I would give this question, this question is not a hard question. It's just that you need to know how, right? The print, you just need to know the, the principles of subscription. So I would give this question a four out of 10 too. This is a very easy question, right? Considering you know, the, sub, the principles regarding subscription. If you don't know the principles regarding subscription, then you definitely would not know how to do this. You, you just would not know what to do, all right? So you have to understand and learn the principles, all right? Next question now, all right? 
Um, the following information was extracted from the books of St. Andrew's Archery Club. So not a receipt and payment account question. Um, however, they are asking you to do the trading account for this question, right? They give you the, the information for the receipt and payment account, right? They give you the bar takings and bar takings is another takings, when I say takings is another um, phrase for bar sales, right? They have bar expenses, then they have the inventory account. They give you the opening inventory balance, closing inventory balance. They provide you with additional information. They say bar purchases total 3.5 times the average inventory for the year. So this basically, you know, it's just a math, a math question. So for persons who are not so math savvy, you probably would have a challenge with this little line right here, right? So they are testing your math skills right here, right? And so you have to ensure that you focus and you pay attention to all of these little things. So they say prepare the bar trading account for the year ended the 30th of June, right? So obviously when you're doing the trading account, um, and, and, and then this is important, uh, is, that, is that the trading account is a part of the income statement. So for persons who don't know how to do a trading account, you can check out my video on income statement. Uh, it's in the link, right? So you, this, you start with, with sales, right? So bar takings would be the same as bar sales, right? So you start with that, which is the 12,450. Yeah, next heading, next cost of sales, you're opening inventory. They give it here, 1,300, good. They didn't need to add purchases, but then we need to calculate purchases now. Um, and so it says 3.5 times the average inventory for the year, right? How do we find average again? Average, right? You have to add both inventory. You get 3,100. Then you have to divide it by two. So it's going to be 3,100 divided by two. And I hope that you can see this. We'll bring it as close as, as possible. Right? So it's 3,100 divided by two, right? Equal 1,550, right? So that's the, that's, the, that's the average inventory, right? But then it says 3.5 times the average, in, average inventory for the year. So it's, it's going to be you now 1,550, which is the average inventory multiplied by 3.5, which would equal to 5,425, all right? So you see, you need to understand these little maths principles in order to do some of these questions, right? So pay attention in maths class. Um, so you had purchases, 5,425 that we just calculated, right? You get 6,725. You subtract your closing inventory, which is 1,800, and we get 4,925, which we are now going to subtract from our bar sales, we get 7,525. That is our gross profit. Then now we are going to subtract our bar expenses, right? Which is the expense that they give us. See there, bar expenses, 1,900, right? And you get 5,625 and that is your net profit, right? Now you may be wondering how you get net profit and um, they say we must provide a bar trading account. For those of you who are, who are knowledgeable about receipts and payments, right? There are times when you are doing the, the trading account right? But then there are expenses there. Remember, you do the trading account to find the profit that is made. If you have expenses, then it's going to impact the profit. So you can't, you can't do the trading account, so to speak, without using or without taking account for the expenses. In a, in a non-profit organization, right, sometimes they will have fundraisers to raise money. The aim of the fundraiser is to make a profit. The only thing is that a lot of times when these bars, when these nonprofit organizations are doing their fundraisers, sometimes they may not incur expenses. So they may call it the trading account. And what we know of the trading account is that it ends at the, 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 the gross profit. But for, for this topic, you need to think about it more on a wider scale, right? Because if you are trying to figure out the true profit, and there are expenses, you have to account for the expenses. So sometimes in carrying out a fundraiser, you may incur expenses that you would have to incorporate. And so even though they will call it a trading account, right? If there are expenses there relating to the fundraiser, you have to account for it in order to show the true or the real profit. You get what I'm saying? All right. So that is the reason why we have to include the bar expenses and then we have net profit here. All right. 
So this question is not a difficult question. The only thing that would make it difficult is the calculation of the purchases figure. Um, so I would give this question a six out of 10 as it relates to difficulty. In total, question five of the 2016 paper was a very easy question. If you are knowledgeable about receipts and payments and single and incomplete records and double entry and um, adjustments to final accounts, then this question would be an easy question, easy 20 marks. All right. So thank you. See you in the next one.